whenever you would like, can you explain what this device is? Yeah, sure. So we decided to build a uh, LED-based lightsaber um, based off our passion for Star Wars. Um, and there's two modes to this. So I guess first it will be easier to like explain and go over uh, what we call our disco mode. Um, and this mode takes in sound from the microphone right here. Uh -huh. um, and then we'll pass that to the ADC on the Pico. Just tucked in there. Yeah, it's tucked, it's in, tucked there. in there. Safe okay. and secure. Then uh, we take an FFT to get it into the frequency domain. Um, and then from that data, we look at the most intense value that it picks up mm -hmm. and uh, convert that to an HSV value, a uh, hue saturation value, where the hue is based off of uh, the frequency and then the saturation and value are both dependent on the intensity. Yeah. And the reason why we do this is because there's a linear mapping uh -huh. uh, from like frequency to HSV because HSV is essentially like a circle. So it's a lot easier to linearly map frequency to HSV rather than RGB. So first you convert to HSV and then we convert HSV to RGB. Um, exactly. Yeah. And uh, these LEDs use 24 bit colors. So we're shifting in uh, each LED a 24 bit color um so we could i guess put the battery last battery in yeah. so can i just yes. real quick sure so in this mode am i correct that you're sampling audio mm -hmm. computing an fft on that audio and then colorizing the leds in accordance with the loudest frequency that you hear yeah so every led has the same color okay um, gotcha and we do that because if they had different colors and the lights are would look a bit funky with sure yeah we want okay. a uniform yeah. color Cool, okay. So, yeah, I'll put this in. It'll look a little random, but we're gonna do a frequency sweep to kind of show how it actually works. Take a second, so here we go. Yeah, so, um, this works from frequencies from zero to 1500 hertz for this mode. So, this is 300 hertz, and it's to show that it's not random. Like, if I stop it, and if I play it again, it's the same color. Yeah. Um, so th the intensity controls um, like how light and how dark it looks. Right now there's a lot of outside noise, so if I reduce the volume, it should get lighter, but it picks up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sh I'll show a sweep. That's nice. Yeah. It's too high pitch, but yeah. So that's the idea. Cool. Yeah. Um, you want to play the song, I guess, also? Nice. <laughs> it's, fun, it's fun to play with. <laughs> yeah, so I'll play the violin song. Just to show it to you. Cool. So that's one mode. Um, we have a button like right here to switch modes between it. Okay. It's pretty small, but it works. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain this part? Yeah. So this is what we call vowel detection. Um, so we have two sounds. We have E and we have A. Uh, so the way it works is um, if, if you say E, uh, the lightsaber turns red. And if you say A, it turns uh, blue. Um, and, and the way we make this work is um, vowels have like a set of unique form and frequencies. Um, and here we have like a chart online. Mm -hmm. So this shows like the first form of frequency and the second form of frequency for a bunch of vowels. Um, so the goal was to extract uh, the form and frequencies and then see if it corresponds to E and A ah, and then change the color accordingly. Um, and to do this, we use a method called sepsural analysis. So we first, um, after we take the FFT like we did in Disco mode, we compute the log two power spectrum, uh, which is just taking the magnitude of the FFT and taking the log two. Mm -hmm. And then we convert it to uh, the sepstrum by taking the FFT of that. Um, and after we do that, we truncate it using a low pass filter to get rid of 
uh, like vocal cord excitation and fast changes. Um, and then we convert it back to the power spectrum by taking the inverse FFT. Um, we, we, we just take the FFT here instead of the inverse FFT because they both go to the same domain with different scale factors. And we don't really care about the scale factors. Here. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah. then we kind of use this for uh, the frequency classification. Um, and like, an important thing to also notice, I mean, you see that this looking at this A right here between male and female, there's kind of a decent range. So when we were going about this, we realized that our it would probably work best if we kind of um, classify it more based off of our own inputs, mm -hmm. um, which were very relatively similar to what we found online, but it just was a little bit more accurate if we uh, shifted it down a little bit to what uh, our voices kind of showed. Um, and it's not 100% accurate, uh, mainly because there's outside noise usually, but I think you want to give it a try. And am I correct that when yep. you say formants, are you talking about um, peaks in yes. the... Yeah. Okay. So there's uh, three big peaks in all these, like the ah, uh, e sound um, sounds. And it's... What we have is this, <clears throat> like, um, upper bound that the peaks have mm -hmm. to overcome for us to be able to pick it up mm -hmm. and normally the, the way that we ended up looking at it because there's three uh the third form and frequency was really difficult to get accurate um because it would when we'd have to lower the noise or the upper bound threshold to allow it to be picked up but yeah. when we did that it picked up a lot of other wrong unnecessary peaks okay that really screwed up the classification mm -hmm. uh so we ended up just looking at two um cool which yeah. again works that works yeah let's see work mm -hmm. yeah do you want to go for it mm -hmm. all right it, yeah. sure e. So, e so e is red and going back uh oh that's, good. <laughs> that's uh, pretty cool <laughs> yeah e <laughs> too far away <laughs> maybe maybe yeah E ah uh, <laughs> E that's tuned to you. <laughs> yeah, it's tuned. We really tune it to it. We tune, tune it to our voice. We try with my voice. You try. E E E. Now you do it again. E. One more time. E. E. That's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of fluctuation, and we did our best to yeah. capture it in the most accurate way. And just to be clear, the whole thing's powered off batteries, so you can actually pick yeah, this yeah. thing up and, yeah. and hold it. Yeah, so, yeah. Justin, you want to pick it up? Sure. So if you want to have a lightsaber fight, <laughs> uh, you can pick it up. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, you can have a lightsaber fight with... Yeah. If someone wants to make another one of these, yeah. we, we could compare. <laughs> Awesome. That's really cool. Thank you, guys. Yep. Yeah.